Dermot, I'm with uh, Bending Branches uh, Paddles and Native Watercraft. Uh, so we're here to learn how to paddle. It sounds like you guys might have gotten a little bit of training on that a few minutes ago, but hopefully it's a little more, uh, you know, give you some new information. Uh, first thing we are going to talk about is, is the different kinds of paddles, the different features, lengths, blade material, weight, all that kind of stuff, and, and uh, kind of how to select the paddle that best fits what you're doing. Um, they, you know, there, there's not a bad paddle out here. They all kind of have different purposes, and most of the ones you're going to see are the, the orange bladed bending branches that you have there. Those are great paddles. Uh, they're real tough blades. They're not going to be the lightest ones out here, uh, but but they're good paddles. And, and paddles are very important. Everybody comes out here, you know, to look at kayaks. And there's a lot of good kayaks out here to try, but people don't always think about the paddle. The paddle is your motor. This is just as important as your kayak versus the paddle that you're using because this is going to determine, uh, you know, how tired you are. A lot of this is going to depend on the paddle that you're using. And it may only be a couple ounces difference, but over the course of, you know, several thousand paddle strokes throughout the day, it's going to, it's going to add up. Uh, so a lot of times what I'll, I'll tell people is, you know, outside of materials and things like that, uh, one of the things you want to look for is a good light paddle. So, you know, Again, most of these are fairly similar today, but I know the Bending Branches tent up there has got a few different kinds. They'll have, you know, they'll obviously look a little different. Pick them up, check them out. They're going to be, you know, some are going to be super lightweight, and you might like that. Take them out in the water and try them. Um, some of them are going to have different shaped blades. I'll get into that in a minute. But the first thing, uh, probably the most important thing, is going to be the length. Uh, and most of these paddles will have a tag on them. This one's adjustable, so it kind of goes across uh, several links, but on, on these orange ones, you're probably going to see it kind of up here at the top, there will be, it'll probably say 220 through 260, somewhere in there. Uh, it could be at the bottom of the blade. Sometimes it's right smack in the middle here. Uh, but the length of paddle that you want is going to be based on a number of factors. Your height, how wide your kayak is. If you have a high seat, effectively you're taller. Um, you know, these are all things that and as you're taller and further away from the water, you need a longer paddle so that you can reach the water. Uh, if, you know, again, if, you're, if your seat's high, you're effectively taller. If your kayak's wider, you're going to have to get a little further out. Uh, you know, if you find that you're hitting the side of your kayak while you're paddling a lot, it's a good indication you have a paddle that's, that's too short. Um, you know, and, and for me, I'd rather have one that's too long than too short. But, yeah, I think for most people, with most of the kayaks out here, you know, if you're kind of medium height, kayak like this, a 230, 240 is probably a good place to start. If you find that you're hitting the side a lot, maybe look at some of the 250s. You're not going to see one bigger than 260 out here, I would think. And that's fairly extreme for most of the kayaks out here. But again, if you're very, very tall or it is a wider kayak, that might be something that you want to look at. Like I said, this one here is actually adjustable. It goes from 240 to 255. So maybe you're you're sharing your, your paddle with somebody, or maybe you have a boat, but this one has got a low position on the seat. And so maybe when I'm sitting lower, I want to, uh, you know, have the kayak paddle a little shorter. So that might be a cool reason to use an you know, adjustable paddle. Uh, any questions about length before I go on? Okay. If you have any questions, I'll just keep talking forever. So, you know, stop me and then I'll answer your questions. Um, on materials, like I said, the, the orange ones they have kind of a plastic blade. Uh, very, very durable. Not the lightest in the world, but they're, they're great paddles. I especially like them when I'm going down. Like I know I'm going down a river. Uh, maybe I'm going through a rapid and there's a quick turn at the end and I'm bracing off of it or I'm pushing off the bottom a lot, maybe with the coast. That's a great blade. All these blades will hold up to that, but some of these are just so pretty I hate them. I hate really beating the heck out of them. You know? Um, I got a wood one in particular. It's my, my favorite blade, but I wouldn't take it down the river with me just because I'd be scared of beating it up. It'll handle it, but it's just my personal preference. Uh, but like this is you know, going to be a lighter material than those blades. The, the paddle shafts, some of them are going to be anything from an aluminum shaft that's going to be a little heavier to some of the carbon fiber and stuff like that that's going to be lighter. So again, try out some of the different materials. The wind is always fun out here. It's not blowing that hard, but just enough to move me around a little bit. Uh, try out some of the different materials uh, and, and see which one you know really fits what you're what you're looking to do. Uh, when you're holding them, most of these are bending branches paddles out here today. You'll notice there's kind of a flat side, and then you have kind of this vein on the back side. When you're paddling, 
that flat side should be facing towards you. You should be reading that text. It should be upright, right? So you know, if you find that that text is upside down, you might be holding it the wrong way. And it may not seem like a big difference, but there's a bit of a different shape here. And it's going to be more efficient to paddle it the correct way. The one exception I will make to that rule is, is when I'm doing a reverse stroke later. I'm going to paddle with this side. And you're not doing that for a long period of time, so it's not that big of a deal. But in general, you're paddling with that flat side of your blade. So when you hold the paddle, you're typically going to be about shoulder width apart. And a lot of these paddle shafts, it'll be actually a little kind of oval here. You can't really see it, but you'll feel it if you roll that paddle in your hands. You can kind of feel that oval spot that's usually an indication of where your, uh, where your hand should be on the paddle. So they're not all like that. I suspect most of those probably do have that kind of oval spot right there. Um, so about shoulder width apart, slight bend in your elbows. Your knuckles are parallel to the top of the blade. Off this dock a little bit, I'll speak up. Uh, the, the exception of your knuckles being parallel to the top of the blade is if I feather this blade, which means I'm gonna, I'm gonna have it angled like that, and I'll show you why you're gonna do that in a minute or why you might do that. You don't have to today, it's not gonna make that big of a difference, but I'll show you why in a minute you might do that. So, again, shoulder width part, knuckles parallel, and that's how you're gonna hold. Knuckles are white because you're gripping it real hard. That's you're gonna get blisters and things like that. That's not gonna be fun. So a nice loose grip. And again, when I'm feathering in a minute, and I'll show, again I'll show you why. I'm actually so loose that I'm, I'm actually able to turn that in my hands as I'm paddling. So nice and loose. So I'm gonna show you a few different strokes here. The first stroke that I'm gonna show you is the one you're gonna use the most today. It's just your forward stroke. A little bit further back so I can build up a little pace and then run into the dock here. So what you're going to do with this stroke is you're going to come in at your feet, at your toes, and you're going to bring that blade back to your hips and it's going to come out at your hips. That's the, that's the, that's the, the distance that that stroke is traveling. And when you come out at your hips, the other blade is it's wound up and it's ready to go, right? And when I do this stroke, just as much as I'm pulling here, I'm pushing up here, and I'm also engaging my core. If I'm doing it right, I'm going to feel it in here because I'm basically pulling my body through that stroke. So I'm going to do a couple. I don't know how visible it is that I'm pulling my body through it, but I'm, I'm, I'm engaging that core as I go. So if you're doing it right, you'll feel it there. And the, the paddle reverse. is, it's cupped towards you, right? Yes. The, curve of the, the blade? Yes. Yeah, right. Yeah. You. When, you're, when you're holding it that way, yeah, there is a little bit of a cup in the blade, okay. so it is towards you. So again, that's, it's going to be far more efficient when you do it that way. Um, the reverse stroke, I just did it there. It's the opposite of your forward stroke. I'm coming in at the waist, I'm going to my toes, and I'm wound up again for that reverse stroke. Right? So it's just like the forward stroke. I'm a little exaggerated with how much I'm bending my arms here today. I probably don't do it quite that much when I'm actually paddling. But in general, I think you probably get the idea. Something else I did is I built up speed here. You're going to use this one a lot today, too. When you get out in the water and somebody pulls in front of you, you're going to need to stop real quick. All I did was just dip the blade in the water and just give it a nice quick push back. So I stopped my progress. I turned myself so I didn't hit that person, the kayak or the dock or the bank or whatever the case may be. Uh, so that's a good little one for, for stopping there. You can, just, you can just drop it in the water and it's going to stop you and pull you to that position. Maybe want to turn, and obviously if I'm turning, I'm just pushing this one side, it's turning the kayak away, right? You can do that. You can also turn just by, like I said, dipping the blade in the water. Maybe you're up to speed, and you don't want to make a whole bunch of strokes on one side, but you want to turn without losing your momentum. And the way that you do that is with this, uh, we call a speed stroke. You build up a little speed, and I'll show it to you. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take that paddle, I'm going to extend it way out, and I'm going to sweep all the way to the back of the kayak. I turn very quickly, especially as I get my blade towards the back. And see, it whips it around pretty quick. One or two of those, and you're halfway around. That one wasn't particularly racing. You may not use that a lot, but it's a good one to know. I'll show you a couple more. 
The last two I'm going to show you, or maybe it's the end of the day and you're pulling up to the dock, or maybe you're stopping for lunch and, and you know, you're out in the water with somebody and you want to pull up to their kayak. Instinctively, most people just do this right here. Right? The downside of that, it worked. The downside of it is you could actually kind of create a vacuum that would suck your paddle blade under the kayak. And if you're trying to pry, I mean, I'm fine in this kayak. Maybe I'm in a narrow kayak that's, that's not as stable. And I try to pry out of that, I actually could tip the kayak over at that point. So that's the downside of that stroke. Again, it's fine to use it. If that happens, don't try to pry. Just drop it. And it comes right out. And then you're back to doing what you were doing, right? That stroke works. The other one that I like, it's fun, uh, it takes a little bit of practice, it's a sculling stroke. As I do this, I'm going to ramp the blade up like this, and basically what I'm gonna, it's going to look like I'm just kind of gathering water right here at my side. So I just got the blade ramped up, I'm just gathering water right here, I'm just coming right to you guys. I don't have that, it's, it, it works a lot faster, and I don't have that, that risk of that blade sucking under the kayak and then me prying, prying it back out and tipping myself over. Plus, I just think it's kind of a cool stroke. It's just, you wouldn't think to do that unless, that's kind of cool unless that's you were taught. Right? Those are all the strokes I'm going to show you today. Um, trying to think if there's anything else I've missed. Off the top of my head, I don't recall. Feathering the... Feathering, thank you. I knew I was missing something. Feathering the blade. So they all have, or most of these paddles have different methods of doing this. Most of those are just going to have little little spots where the button clicks in at a different angle. The reason you might do that is before I had this feather and the blades were parallel, as I'm paddling through, and there's, especially if it's windy, I'm getting a lot of wind resistance up here as I'm paddling through. Throughout the day, that's going to wear me out. If I feather the blade, as I take that stroke, the blade's cutting through the air now. Right? So you're not getting that resistance on the blade when you're feathered. Again, out here today, you're probably paddling for a few minutes at a time. It's not particularly windy. You're not going a long distance. It's not going to make that big of a difference. I always do it just because that's how I taught myself to do it. Um, when I do that, obviously because you're changing angles as you make your paddle strokes, again, this hand is kind of loose, and this one's got kind of a flex in it as I'm, as I'm turning it to do that paddle stroke. This one's staying nice and tight. Well, again, not so tight that... My knuckles are turning white, but I'm holding on to it here and I'm just letting it turn right here. Does that make sense? Any questions? I know you guys have sat through two super long clinics. I'm sure you are ready to get on the water. If you have any more questions today, don't hesitate to talk to anybody in the blue shirt. I'll have a little ACK logo on them. They can answer any questions that you might have.